While we were sailing in Kenya, we used Kalifi as a base. One of the reasons was the facilities at uh, Kalifi and the stability of being able to be there safely and at anchor. And the second was it was just in the proximity, it was in the middle of the country so it allowed you to sail north and to sail south. Uh, in total, we actually spent three different occasions in Kalifi before we left heading south for Mombasa and then Kali uh, Shimoni. From Kalifi Boatyard, it was a short dinghy ride across to uh, Kalifi the town where there was a nice uh, shopping center where you could buy all the food and supplies that you needed uh, to be able to, to live well and, um, and keep the boat supplied to be able to leave from there and sail to other destinations. The season changed early this year, so on the 7th of April, we decided we needed to move south to get down to Tanzania again. Uh, the main reason because the wind started blowing from the south, which is the Kuzi um, monsoon. And essentially what happens is you have the wind blowing constantly every day from the south. And you have a very strong current building up from the south up to four knots near Mombasa. So it makes it very difficult to try and sail south the longer you leave it into the season. The sail from Kalifi down to Matwapa was a 27.4 nautical mile sail. The wind was um, still very good so we managed to sail down there on a uh, spinnaker and we got some good speed on the way down to Matwapa. Uh, we were at Matwapa at about one o'clock in the afternoon. Before entering Matwapa, I gave Peter, another sailing uh, Kenyan friend that we had met in Kalifi, a call as he had a, a house at Matwapa so he could give us um, directions inside um, because it is quite a big reef on both sides of the channel going in. So I gave him a call and he, he confirmed that everything would be safe to, to follow the channel markers in and uh, off we went in safely to Matwapa. Thanks again Peter for the help. On entering Matwapa Creek, uh, we noticed some camels walking on the side of the beach and one of them was actually standing in the water. This was obviously a first to both of us. Once we were safely anchored, we put up the drone to get some footage as this is an amazing destination in terms of the greenery and the houses down the side of the creek and the small restaurants on the side where we went and spent an, uh, a nice evening having some supper and watching the sunset. We left 
uh, early the next morning from Matwapa to sail down to Mombasa. This was a 13.4 nautical mile sail which did not take us very long and we moved in, down the shipping channel and into Tudor Creek on the starboard side of Mombasa where we anchored. We spent a lovely five days in Mombasa meeting up with Chris who's a fellow leopard owner and his leopard is anchored in fact outside of his apartment which is on the Tamarind village and Chris has been in, in Kenya while well, in Mombasa for 65 years so he knows the town well and we spent quite a bit of time with Chris getting to know Mombasa. Chris took Maya and myself for a lovely lunch on a beachfront restaurant just in the northern sections of Mombasa, just outside the, the town, um, which was quite interesting once again to see camels walking on the beach. The food at the restaurant was great, but so were the desserts. Kenya certainly knows how to um, produce nice ice cream. The next morning Chris had arranged for us to park Serian on their private dock for the day. We, this allowed us to fill up our water tanks and uh, pressure wash the boat and also load all the diesel that we needed into the tanks uh, from the dock which was much easier. We got the necessary parts to upgrade Chris's electrical system on his boat so we could display all the wind and instruments onto his um, Raymarine display. Chris took us over to the Mombasa Club, which is a really an amazing old venue that has been there for more than 120 years in Mombasa. And we went to the, the club for traditional lunch and after that we went to visit the fort. Fort Jesus was built by the Portuguese in 1593. What is quite interesting is that you seldom go to any place in East and Southern Africa without finding um, old forts built by the Portuguese during this era. The fort is well preserved, has quite a nice uh, museum in the fort and has a lot of artifacts from the time that um, the fort was built. From 1894 to 1896, Mombasa was a British protectorate. Chris suggested we visit the Heller uh, Eco Park, which is an old quarry that was used for stone that had been converted 
um, all the disused sections into an eco park with full of animals um, and the back section of the the quarry is still functioning as a quarry but the whole rest of the quarry is is now a park so we went and we spent the day walking around the eco park These giant tortoises in the park are reportedly br being brought across from um, the Seychelles. Uh, you will find a number of these massive tortoises also in, uh, in, well, in Tanzania and Zanzibar where they were also brought from the Seychelles. Um, nobody knows exactly what period they were brought here. Inside the park they have a butterfly pavilion where the, well the butterfly pavilion is attached to the University of Mombasa and they study various types of butterflies and everything related to butterflies in, in this pavilion. No park in Africa would be complete without some Nile crocodiles. The wind was now steadily blowing from the south when we left Mombasa and in fact this so far in the last 12 months of our sailing um, down the east coast of Africa became our most difficult trip. It was only a 55 nautical mile uh, sail from Mombasa down to Shimoni but with the strong current of 3 to 4 knots against us and the winds blowing from the south we were beating into 25 to 30 knots of wind and this journey took us a full 24 hours when we arrived only the next morning at Shimoini. The weather was pretty gloomy during this trip. We had lots of rain during the afternoon and as we had not really expected to sail into the night, um, it was a tough one on us having to sail right through until 
6 o'clock the next morning when we arrived at Shemoini. Once we had put down the hook and safely anchored in uh, Shimoini, we went to sleep uh, and had a good rest after a tough evening. We spent the weekend at Shimoini and we spent a little time going to the beach and also preparing the boat um, for our next leg which was a sail to Pemba Island which we would do later in the week. While we were on anchor it was time to service the winches which are two speed winches but they were only working on one speed as the poles had jammed and were not allowing the winch to work the one direction. It was a pure coincidence this year that on our way north up the east coast of Kenya we stopped at Chimoini and we happened to have Maya's birthday in February there and on the opposite direction going south we spent my birthday in April also at Chimoini. If you like this video please click the like button and subscribe to see our further episodes which will entail us sailing back to Pemba Island and down to Zanzibar.